Hello everyone, it's Dr. Ryan here with another rapid physiology review. Today I'm gonna to tell you everything you need to know about effective circulating volume for the step one exam. Effective circulating volume is a super important physiology concept and that's because it explains the body's response to several very common disease states. So let's start by talking about what we mean when we use the term effective circulating volume. This is a volume of blood in the body, but it's not a volume you can actually measure in a patient and determine whether it's one liter or two liters or three liters. It's a theoretical concept, and it refers to the volume of blood that fills the arterial tree and effectively perfuses tissues delivering oxygen. And the reason this concept, this theoretical concept of ECV was developed is because when the ECV gets low, there's a common response from the body, and this is relevant to several disease states. So let's think about what are some situations where the effective circulating volume is low. Well, the easiest one to understand is volume depletion. So when the body's volume depleted for any reason, the ECV will be low. So this could be from hemorrhage, this could be from sweating, this could be from vomiting or diarrhea, whatever the cause, if the body is volume depleted, then the effective circulating volume, the volume of blood that fills the arterial tree and effectively delivers oxygen to tissues is going to be low. And so that's the easiest cause of low ECV to understand volume depletion. But there are two other causes where there is plenty of blood volume in the body and yet the effective circulating volume is low. And those two other causes are heart failure and cirrhosis. So in both of these conditions, even though there's lots of blood volume, the effective circulating volume is low. So patients with heart failure, as you may know, have plenty of blood volume. Their ankles are swollen, there's fluid in their lung tissue, their neck veins are engorged. There's no problem of low blood volume, and yet they have low effective circulating volume, and the reason they have low effective circulating volume is because the cardiac output is low. And so in heart failure, the body is going to respond the same way it responds to volume depletion, even though there is not volume depletion present. In cirrhosis, there is also low effective circulating volume. And the reason this happens in cirrhosis is because the systemic vascular resistance is low. So in patients with cirrhosis, there's vasodilation of splanchnic blood vessels. Those are the blood vessels in the abdomen. This leads to low systemic vascular resistance. And in this situation, the effective circulating volume, the volume of blood perfusing tissues is low. Even though patients with cirrhosis have lots of blood volume, they have a fluid wave in their abdomen, they have ascites, they have swollen ankles, there's no problem with low blood volume, and yet the body is going to respond the same way it does to volume depletion, and that's because the ECV is low. So in all three of these states, which are relatively common disease states, there's low effective circulating volume, but the reason for the low ECV is different in each state. And anytime the effective circulating volume gets low, the blood pressure can get low. So you can see hypotension in all three of these disease states. Also, there will be decreased renal blood flow because there's less blood perfusing the kidneys. And this is going to lead to a fall in the glomerular filtration rate. So you can potentially see pre-renal azotemia, an increase in the BUN and creatinine in all three of these disease states, even though, as I said, in heart failure and cirrhosis, there's plenty of blood volume, but nevertheless, the kidneys are acting like they're being underperfused from not enough blood volume. Okay, so now that we understand the three classic disease states that cause low ECV, let's talk about how the body responds anytime the ECV is low. So this response is going to occur in volume depletion, it's also gonna occur in heart failure, it's also gonna occur in cirrhosis. Well, when the ECV is low, you're gonna get increased activity of the sympathetic nervous system, Baroreceptors will sense the low ECV, the low blood pressure, the underperfusion of the arterial tree, and that will activate the sympathetic nervous system. Also, when the ECV is low and the kidneys are underperfused, they release renin, so you get increased activity of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. And these two systems are going to generate a couple of responses that you see in all the low ECV disease states. The first one is that you're going to get vasoconstriction of peripheral arterioles. And the goal here is to increase the SVR. Now, in cirrhosis, the SVR is low from cirrhosis. And even though vasoconstriction happens in response to low ECV, the SVR will not increase to be normal or above normal. The body is unable to compensate for the low SVR of cirrhosis. But nevertheless, this vasoconstriction does occur from these two systems in an attempt to raise the SVR in cirrhosis. In heart failure, and in volume depletion, you will see a high SVR, meaning an SVR that is above the normal level. And that is because of the response of these two systems and the vasoconstriction. 
Another thing that's going to happen, which is mediated through the sympathetic nervous system, is that the heart rate and contractility is going to go up in the left ventricle. This is an attempt to increase the cardiac output for compensation for low ECV. Now, in patients with heart failure, the cardiac output will still be below normal. The body cannot compensate and raise the cardiac output back up to a normal level or an above normal level. Also, in volume depletion, the cardiac output will remain low. There's just not enough blood volume for the cardiac output to be normal or high. But nevertheless, this response will take place in an attempt to raise the cardiac output. In patients with cirrhosis, however, they will have a cardiac output that is above the normal range. That's a classic finding of cirrhosis, and it's because of this response. And then the final piece of the response of the sympathetic system and the RAS is that they will increase sodium and water retention by the kidneys. And the idea here is to try to raise the ECV back up to normal. Now, unfortunately, in heart failure and cirrhosis, all this extra water and sodium is going to go to the wrong places. It is not going to raise the ECV, but this will lead to pulmonary edema and lower extremity edema. And in patients who have hypovolemia, even though the kidneys are holding on to sodium and water, they can't bring that blood volume back up because there simply isn't enough in the body. But nevertheless, this response is occurring. So what's going to happen in patients who have heart failure and cirrhosis is they will have increased total body water and they will have an increase in total body sodium. And that's because the kidneys are hanging on to all this extra fluid and sodium. In patients who have volume depletion, they will have below normal total body water and sodium because the kidneys can't make up for the lack of water and sodium throughout the whole body. And so summarized on this slide is everything you need to know about the body's response to low ECV. It explains the physiology behind three very common conditions, volume depletion, heart failure, and cirrhosis. And if you understand this, there are lots and lots of questions you can answer on your step one exam about what's going on in patients with these common disease states. And that concludes our rapid physiology review.